Hi, I'm John McDavid with the Badger Airbrush Company, and boy, do we have a mouthwatering show for you today. Our guest artist today is Jerry Manderfield. He's been airbrushing cakes for the last 10 years. Jerry, can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to be showing us today? Yes, John. There are many aspects to cake decorating. Of them all, airbrushing is by far my favorite, and by the end of the video, you'll see why. Okay, well, I'm hungry, so let's get started. Okay. Before Jerry gets started today, I'd like to take you through some of the basic equipment that we'll be using. And I'm going to start with the airbrush. Uh, it is a single action, gravity-fed airbrush. You put your color in here. The air flows consistently through the airbrush. You don't have to worry about air at all. And then you just pull back on the trigger to release your color. Then you can set it down in this handy-dandy airbrush holder. Uh, it cradles the airbrush so that it cannot fall and hit the ground and be damaged, and it also prevents you from spilling color. Also, we have a clear hose that you can see is attached to the compressor here, and basically that just lets you see if you have any water trapped in the line or any impurities. The large compressor runs 25 to 30 PSI, and it's good for the large bakery that will be doing everything from sheet cakes to small pastries. The small compressor is the 80-3. It runs at about 10 pounds of pressure, and it's ideal for cupcakes, pastries, and smaller cake projects. There are a variety of stencils available in different themes, graduation events, um, sporting events, and the such. And you may want to check with your preferred distributor to see what they have in stock. Next, we have our airbrush ready colors. Uh, again, I must stress airbrush ready and you'll want to check with your preferred distributor to find the colors that suit your creative needs. Finally, we have our overspray cleaning chamber, which can be used to expel excess color from your airbrush. And that's it. And now I'm going to hand you over to Jerry, who's going to teach you some basic skills. Now I'm going to get into practicing techniques. What I'm going to do is show you how to work on dots and lines today. The dots and lines are something we need to practice so we can get the feel for the airbrush, the trigger, and how the food color is dispersed from the cup. Starting with the dots, what you want to do is air, aim your airbrush straight down. Don't, don't aim it on the side or you're going to have, you're going to get that uh, overspray. You aim straight down and you move right along, you make dots that are all of the same size. Now, what you want to do is pull the airbrush away from the surface about a couple inches and try to make dots that are the same size also, but what you notice is they're bigger because the airbrush is farther from the surface. Anytime you pull the airbrush away from the surface, it widens the spray. You'll notice when I pull it way back, you get a big wide dot. Now the same goes with the lines. Once you've done dots enough where you feel that you're comfortable with the consistency, try the lines. See how I'm keeping the airbrush close to the surface? You can get it really close and get a very fine line. With, with a cake, it won't work as well, however. I'm working on cardboard again. But on a cake, if you get it that close, you, there's a chance you might blow the icing out. But if you keep it back at a safe distance like this, you can get a pretty fine line, which is enough for cake decorating. Again, having this airbrush way back, you get a big, wide line. And you'll notice how it fades out. It's not as dark and bold as the, the closer lines were. Practice these things and you'll be on your way. Now, next, I'm going to teach you how you can use these dots and lines to spray borders on cakes. Okay, back to the borders. A very plain and simple border is just a wide stream. Uh, now notice how I'm spraying farther back. I'm keeping it really light. I could go all the way around the cake like that. I'm just going to do one side just to demonstrate 
this type of border and I'll do something different on the, each edge. Um, now tying in what we learned before, I'm going to utilize those techniques. That's the wide line. Now I'm going to spray a, a, a very fine line, which gives it a definition. It gives you a nice clean edge. If you really wanted to get um, a good clean edge, you could take some sort of stencil paper, cardboard, anything, lay it on there and, and spray along. And see how it gives you a nice clean edge. 